omuonge wodhombude. Ama bakwasa. So, I now invite Stephanie, uh, the Deutsche Welle Academy Project Manager for the Southern African region, to discuss regional trainer pool. Stephanie. Thank you, Teresa, for the introduction. And uh, I prepared a few slides, only five I'm going to share. Then I'm going to show you one example of a trainer network. And if time allows, we can still play with the Jamboard and have a, have a brief Q&A session. But let me start with sharing the screen. Share. Now you should see a PowerPoint presentation. All right, I see you nodding, Teresa. I hope that works out. All right, so I would like to take it up from, from Aubrey's presentation on Thursday um, about collaboration and co-creation. And I would like to focus on the co-creation part and actually on the people um, who are driving the whole process forward. Um, our journalism trainers, they are the key figures of our co-creation process. And I would like to shed a light, who are they actually, where are they based and what skills do they have? I would like to throw you back into the year 2000, 2018 when we started together with Misa Malawi developing four different training modules um, with 12 different trainers coming from Malawi um, and, and Germany. These were the modules Effective Public Communication and Voter Center Election Reporting, Digital Storytelling with a Smartphone and Basic Radio Skills for Community Broadcaster. And then moving to the beginning of 2020, we already had a different picture. Um, there was a high demand in producing more journalism training modules also coming from uh, being articulated from other partners in Zimbabwe and in Namibia. So in the beginning of 2020, we had about nine different modules um, having been co-created by more than 30 different trainers. And then we um, experienced March 2020 and the pandemic um, came over us and it was clear the demand for training is, is higher than ever. Um, and it was clear we have to, we have to customize uh, our training strategy. So our first idea was let's uplift trainer capacities and support e-learning capacities in the region and also, uh, also among our German trainers. And secondly, um, let's develop e-learning training modules. So we decided um, for four different modules um, to create uh, e-learning um, and mobile learning optimized training modules. And during that process, surprisingly, um, the COVID pandemic offered us um, one interesting experience and actually an eye-opening opportunity. Um, it showed us a way of regionalization and, and how to get this regionalization in a very tangible format. I'm going to tell you how. We were thinking of um, setting up a train the e-trainer um, to, to, to support that e-learning capacities among our trainer teams. And we didn't do that country-wise. We decided, okay, let's bring them together. Uh, in one um, training se session that lasted, or in one training process that lasted about two and a half months. And we brought together trainers coming from Malawi and Zimbabwe and Namibia. And the team had joined training sessions, 
but also at the same time they were um, developing their e-learning modules and coming back to the team again and having these peer review peer review um, feedback sessions among the the regional trainer group and then they went out again had a pilot pilot we're piloting their training modules and we're coming back to our TTE trainer group and sharing their best experiences and worst experiences. So it was a real regional exchange of, of knowledge, of learnings, etc. And that was actually a great experience how this, um, the whole virtual context with Zoom calls and WhatsApp groups, etc., um, created quite a close trainer to trainer bunch of people and some responses uh, among the trainer of, of the trainers where um, that was great a great skills sharing with all the specific expertise the journalists had in the group um, we had investigative journalists we had digital storytellers Marcus Teresa we're joining George Selena you you please come in <laughs> later in the Q&A session um, and we had this, uh, the trainers appreciated that peer mentoring process. And here we do have a quote from No. Um, he said, wow, what a cross pollination in that group and that process. So, and then we thought, okay, how can we have more of that cross pollination? And the first step was, um, or a next step, and then just, just a trial is to have that trainer, to have a trainer database. Um, I leave you with this application and we move on to the trainer database. And now sharing the, my screen again. You should see the Padlet now. Yeah. All right. I still have the PowerPoint on the other screen, but it will work out. So we started to, to ask trainers, how about, how do you feel about having this one place where all the trainer profiles appear? Um, and we gave it a few criteria where we thought, okay, it might be interesting for other trainers to know about. Definitely, it's the name and the professional background you can see here. And then interesting question would be my best training experience. What was a mind blowing training you ever had received or you were giving? And then training opportunities the, um, the trainers are looking for. And this is what we set up during the last two weeks. And the responses from the trainers so far were quite positive. And I would love to start with the Q&A now to get some responses of what do you think would work? What is rather difficult? Q&A session is opened, Teresa. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie. So there you have it, uh, the regional trainer pool. As you can see from there, we have uh, trainers from Zimbabwe, Malawi, uh, Namibia, pretty awesome. So you, you can just you know, go to that Padlet and uh, you are looking for a particular uh, a trainer in maybe a particular uh, area or course then you, you probably can select from there. Or you would want to have a, a conversation on, um, with a trainer. There you can also uh, get some information. Are there any reactions or the trainers themselves? Would they want to share some quick experience from the collaboration that has happened um, during the period that we were not able to meet physically? We had to collaborate um, online. It seems to have all worked out. That's why we're here. Any, any, anyone who would want to share? Anderson, I see you. Trainer experience. I do see I can share from Chloe. Thanks, Chloe. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, yeah, Chloe, okay. brilliant. You're going to get sick of hearing my voice. Um, yeah, I no, think this experience all. was really incredible for me. I, I've done a lot of online training, but not in this space before. Um, and so it was fantastic. I felt like I was both a trainee and a trainer. I learned a lot about the content from my fellow trainers, um, and we had a fantastic uh, online PTET where I met a lot of new people. Uh, we discussed a lot of different ways of doing things. And yeah, I really feel like we have uh, the beginnings of what is going to be, I hope, a really powerful network of people to share ideas. Um, yeah, and even as you heard from the WhatsApp training, you know, we kind of threw out some ideas of different ways of doing things. And the next day, the next day, you know, Misa Malawi and Marcus had pulled it off. So I think even in that short space of time, we've had a lot of innovation, which is really cool. Um, there's definitely going to be struggles in keeping the momentum up. Uh, so that's something that we all want to work towards, uh, staying in touch with each other and kind of continuing that relationship. But it's exciting. Brilliant. Thanks, Chloe. And, and picking from what Chloe said during our um, train the e-trainer sessions, um, there were also developed some ideas of maybe we swap trainer teams because on one hand we had some overlappings with the topics of digital storytelling and explain a video so um, there was this idea created okay let's let's swap trainer teams and also to learn about the methods from other trainer teams etc best practices worst practices and and to have that trainer need to know about who is out there who is facing a similar problem or who has got a solution um, for a problem maybe and these are kind of things okay where where can they do that now um, there is a whatsapp group established but why not having a broader broader network right. stefan maybe before we close do you have anything yeah i <laughs> I was fearing that you want to close the session because I no. still I still have one, one if time allows and you allow I would still yes, have you can continue. Um, a, a jam board because it's it, um, where we can develop some ideas okay how to keep it alive that network or what is actually important what what would you like to share on that um, the trainer platform so I, I just put a link to a jam board into the chat here in our Zoom chat and um, the WhatsApp chat. And there you see two slides. The first one is um, a virtual trainer platform of journalism trainers. What benefits do you see? Where do you see the benefits? What do you want to get out of it? And then if you move on to slide two, there you have the question, what does the platform actually need? Because probably a number of people know about these um, created databases, et cetera, that um, once created, they never came to life. So what do you actually think is needed to, to make it work and to make it really handy for you? All right, so I would like to encourage you to post, to give yourself two minutes and post a few ideas on the Jamboard. Stephanie, do you want us to do that now? Oh yeah, my idea was to do that now. It wouldn't take long, John, only a few ideas. Yeah. I do see some posts already, cross-pollination of ideas. Let me think who posted that. <laughs> A network of resources, right? We, we started to do that, having one G drive um, where all the content and, and pilot training tools or templates are shared. Visibility, I guess that is the visibility of the network. Learning from people's success and failures. Finding a training partner, right. Let me move on to 
the needs, constant input, example best cases, demand, good question. Can the person who posted that come forward? Really, demand is a question. Is there demand for it? Do we need it? Whoever posted that, please let us know more. More about so your post. I'm thinking around that was I've just seen situations where if we all need the information and the camaraderie and sort of relationships that we will find there, it will work. And if we don't need it, it won't work. But we have to actually identify that we have a need in order for it to be useful. All right. Thank you. I think we can just leave it for now and take some of your ideas and see how, how we continue with it. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks, Marcus. Over to you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks to you. Omuonge wadhumbudhi. Ama bakwasa.